on guys, Devin Burris, Power Shine Pressure Wash in about Austin, Georgia. Out here looking at the truck today, I uh, wanted to give you guys an update about what all we've done so far. As you can see, we've made quite a bit of progress since we last spoke. I had the truck wrap put on, uh, put some chrome trim on the truck. Put LED lights in it. Let's see, got a bull bar. Obviously, the ladder rack has been finished and has been painted. And as of yesterday, we have a cured, dried uh, Herculiner second layer. So we did two coats of Herculiner. Um, and today, which that Herculiner looks amazing, doesn't it? I mean, this is really, really rough stuff. Like, super, super happy with that. Um, little walk around. Went ahead, we moved the license plate. Um, I sanded this off. This is where my phone number is going to go. And I think I'm having some plates made that are actually going to cover this. It's going to have my services company etc but today i'm going to be installing that light and like just to center it here I'm just going to put some self-tapping screws in it mount it up there and uh yeah that's it so we should be good to go there fancy ain't it oh i don't know how to do this maybe maybe follow down there and go under and then run conduit under the bed and then up through my electrical box which is going to go right in this little spot right here and i've already got the electrical box uh pretty much all the way wired up i have to take the battery out of that box and rebuild my soft wash box and that box is going to sit back here i'm thinking proportioner on the back side of here i got to get a plate I'm going to mount my proportioner. It's going to look pretty slick. So, yeah, that's my thought. So, um, I'll show you guys the box that I have in the house with my electrical in it so you can kind of see how I did that. Um, if you want, you can YouTube John Boat um, electrical box wiring. Uh, there's more videos concerning how to do it on a John Boat than there is on an actual pressure washing rig, but it's the same concept. I wanted a an electrical box to separate chemicals from wiring, really help with corrosion, all that stuff. Uh, excuse all the mess. Uh, start off very organized and then wind up very messy. This is the box I was telling you guys about. I got a voltmeter here, and it actually has an on-off switch on it. it. Has a two USB ports so I can charge phones stuff like that I got a six switch switchboard um, I put silicone on the inside of this because I noticed that there was like a gap so silicone behind there before I put it in and I had to do some rewiring where these little lights typically stay on all the time and you have to rewire the actual switchboard just so that they light up when you turn them on. Obviously, there's no power to it right now. I don't have a battery in there. But this is what I took off. And then um, this is sort of my wiring diagram. It's, it's garbage. I'm sorry. But this is going to be coming from the bottom of the box. These are my accessories. So there's positive and negative on each one. And you can see they go to the switch. And then the switch actually goes to the fuse box and there's a kill switch battery screenshot it figured out or don't that's fine um, put this uh, noco charge port so i don't have to ever open this box to charge it i just you know, plug it in and it's run to this battery charger, Noco Genius 
uh, 5X1. I've got a kill switch up there. You can see my switch is coming in, going into my fuses. I labeled everything uh, according to what switch it goes to, so I know. And then next, I'll be putting the battery in here. Without spending too much time on this, this is what it looks like. It, I want it to stay about like that. It keeps falling. I don't know if I can tighten these down. It's got these weird rubber pieces here. I don't know what they actually even do. I'll probably take those out, put something in there, crank down on it, get it to stay situated like that. I set my hose reel up here just to sort of mock up as far as distance goes and we're, but I'll have two hose reels here that are this wide that are going to store high pressure line and I'm not planning to run anything through them so I want to paint them all black make a match uh, but yeah so far that's that's where it stands light on the side of the truck I believe will probably help a little bit I've got two more that are going to go back here uh, they're little bitty lights what am I doing anyways yeah, so uh, this is uh, the update on the old rig. So I am doing some wiring today. I decided to go with conduit, and I've got zip ties up here right now, but I've got clamps. Uh, these zip ties are just temporary to hold it in place, but I, I got these two lights on the rear of the truck mounted. And I got this one mounted the other day, which I showed you guys, and now I'm doing the wiring. So problem I was running into was how do I get this to go in wound up just taking a I don't know if you can see it very well but I took a a vera bit and just drilled out a hole about the size I'd like and run my wires in did that for both of these and then they come out here as you can see so I've got a uh, big light rear lights and right now I'm about to put some heat shrink on this connection I've already heat shrinked both of these but I just like as an added precaution to put an extra heat shrink around them really the conduit's not a must uh, it's just a another added safety measure for me honestly so I don't ever have to redo this wiring and I put an access point there so if any of these Pieces where I've spliced these wires and stuff together messes up. I can redo them. I mean, you can see them a bit sweaty. And then under the truck, it's going to go over here, and then it's going to come up right in that area. I have my electrical box there, which I've drilled a hole in the back already. So those lights will come in. All those wires will come in, and I'll be able to plug them in, use a switch, turn everything on. Pretty simple. I uh, got kind of a mess going on here, or it looks like a mess. It's just a bunch of wires and tools laying around, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update, and uh, maybe I'll remember to video some more whenever I get everything tightened up and, and finished. So I officially mounted my electrical box. I guess we'll start here. Uh, so far, it's a chaotic mess of wires, but these are all my my lights, so I got basically three wires uh, like I showed you one coming from the two rear lights one coming from this overhead work light and then one coming right there where my tank light will hook up and I put quick connects there just so I could if tank light messes up I can replace it without having to undo everything I'll show you what it looks like underneath the truck so before I do that I put a plastic grommet around that hole and then I had some of this leftover uh, whatever you call it I put that around just just for an added precaution because where my hole came out as you can see was not on the same side that my pipe wanted to go and I didn't feel like recutting that pipe and all that stuff so kind of utilize this hole here and it actually worked out pretty good um, that just runs all the way over here I don't know if I can get this in here. You see it just comes down. There's a 90 and it goes all the way back. Ah! I dropped you. Sorry about that. I dropped you. Anyways. <laughs> uh, 
it uh comes up goes over here blah, 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 blah. runs to this junction box here which i showed you earlier comes over to this light as you can see it just kind of goes in there i might shoot some silicone in that hole same with this one silicone it same with that silicone it and it'll be a watertight system for my electrical i labeled all of these i don't know if you could see last time so this will be my 12 volt pump which i've yet to place here and then i'm going to run the wiring from the pump i'm going to run a wire under the truck and into there and then on this end there'll be a quick connect so if my pump goes bad, I disconnect it, take the pump out, put the new one in, connect it, never have to mess with the wiring. That was my whole plan. So water pump, then I have my underwater lights, which will be my tank lights. I'll have my light bar, which is this one right above me, and then my rear lights. And then obviously I have two open, open switches. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe and follow along. Still have a lot to do. The hard work you put in during the build, making sure that everything is easy on site. If something does break, because it always does, there's the saying, two is one and one is none. It's very true. So if something does tear up or break while you're on the job, you need to be able to quickly take it off, replace it. And so that's sort of what I'm looking at having done. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you a final walk around of everything that I accomplished today. Got my, got this box mounted. I got that box mounted. I got those two boxes mounted. Went ahead and hung my surface cleaner up here. Uh, show you how we mounted it. It's just a piece of flat bar and a rod, piece of flat bar and a rod, piece of flat bar back there that just, it kind of rests on and a bracket and eventually I think I'm gonna drill a hole here and put a lock through it so nobody can steal it which whatever <laughs> I got my lights on the back the electrical ran as I've showed you previously just wanted to kind of wrap up this video and show you guys sort of an overall look at everything super happy with these boxes super happy with the way everything turned out i'm ready to run this truck i'm i'm ready to get off of this one uh i want to put her to rest let her down easy um i've got some plans for this truck that develop and they change this is an absolutely solid rig solid rig i've done hundreds of thousands literally hundreds of thousands of square feet of concrete off this little machine this is uh i don't know what the model is anyways it's about eight gallons a minute and that little 50 gallon buffer tank 50 gallon bleach tank it has been phenomenal i do not have um a flow pro or whatever Thinking about hitting up Judd because uh, Judd West actually lives in the same town as me. So much love for Judd. Absolutely love the Flow Pro. And I don't even have one. I've seen enough about it. I'm going to get one. Uh, I bought the bypass mounting brackets from Judd uh, that are going to go on this truck. I just find so far that I don't really need the, the remote system as of yet. Um, I know that. I know that I want one, but honestly, when I get on a job and I'm out there and I spray the whole property or a whole side of a building with chemicals, I find that, you know, I don't really need to do anything than other than let it dwell. And while it's dwelling, I like to walk back to the truck. So that's how it's worked with this truck so far. I used to have like a, a remote downstream box that you know i made one of those remote downstreamers and it came out of there i 
I can show you. One of these cheap Chinese valves with an actuator on it, US solid. The actuator's great. This thing lasted for like a month and then this seam blew. Uh, not made for high pressure, guys. But you live and you learn. And I learned that rinsing through a downstream injector is not the way to go. So then I got the bypass. I've been running the bypass ever since. Love it. I just have not upgraded to an actuated remote bypass system, which I plan to do on this rig. So like I told you guys before, ease and automation are basically the number one things you want out of your system. You want to be able to take something out and put a new one back in easily. Uh, and that's just all about growth. So this is really my growth and my development. This truck is going to reflect a lot of what I've learned on my old truck. And yeah, so, you know, I'm sure I'll learn a lot of stuff on this that eventually when I do a rebuild or I tear everything down and kind of redesign and stuff, hopefully I don't have to do that very much, but I'm sure I will, you know, learn some things along the way and develop and grow. That's the whole point of this business is, is personal growth and development. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm sorry that I don't have a bunch of exciting content right now, just kind of blabbing and talking and whatever, but I like watching people blab and talk and it teaches me things. Maybe you can see something while I'm walking around this truck that, that, you know, might be helpful to you. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm not giving you the best angles and stuff, but yeah, I'm going to do a complete walk around of this truck when I get it all built. So don't worry about that. We're going to do a walk around. I know I promised to do one of the other truck and I never delivered, but, uh, I believe when I actually go to do a tear down, I'll probably talk about some things and then I'm going to do a walk around of this truck. Give me a thumbs up, uh, click the subscribe button. Talk to me in the comments below or whatever. Peace. See you guys later.